Uh, well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sligo Leitrim Donegal uh, webinar series. This is our, is our ninth uh, series, and I'm delighted to be joined tonight um, uh, by th three colleagues. Uh, Shane McHugh, Chagas uh, Business and Technology Advisor based in, in Letterkenny, uh, John Lynch, Manager with uh, Dovea, and Rosalind Goulding uh, with NCBC, uh, or Progressive Genetics. So tonight, uh, look, I'm going to ask, Shane's going to present first here tonight, and basically Shane's going to uh, talk about the, the new uh, Suckler Cow Carbon Efficiency Programme that's going to be launched in 2023. I know it's still at, in the proposal stage, but uh, Shane's going to give you a rough uh, outline of the scheme in, in 2023. And suppose, look, it's not that far away and farmers do need to plan uh, what's coming down the track. And then John and Rose is going to basically show you what bulls uh, both AI companies uh, have for farmers in, in 2022. And suppose, look, with rising costs in terms of fertilizer, diesel, plastic, Everything, you know, uh, cows on the farm now, as myself and John were discussing before the meeting tonight, you know, it's very difficult to uh, have passengers on the farm. And, um, you know, the cows that you have on your farm need to be farming, need to be calving down every 365 days, need to have plenty of milk, and they need to be basically putting that that, that calf that the cow produces needs to be converted, converting um, basically the, the milk into uh, daily labour again as efficiently as possible and having a heavy weaning to sell if you're selling weanlings uh, come weaning time. So without further ado, I'd like maybe uh, Shane to maybe share his screen. Shane, do you hear me there? Quick rundown on what, what's ahead of us. As was Gary outlined, um, it's the Suckler Carbon Efficiency Programme. And basically, look what it is. It's a roll and of your currently your BPS, your BDGP uh, schemes that are there, and it's going to be accumulated into one major suckler scheme and suckler carbon efficiency program. And just look, it's coming in. It's proposed to come in in twenty twenty three. Um, it's at the stages in Brussels, waiting for approval, and I suppose waiting for launch. But it's the new, I suppose, suckler scheme. And it will be one scheme um, going forward. So look, you, when we get to the next few slides, you'll 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 know how we're doing it tonight. It's just to set the scene. There's a budget of two hundred sixty million across the <clears throat> five years. So uh, twenty twenty three to twenty twenty eight, the 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 next years the cap is when it's going to uh, duration of when it's going to run. The payments look similar to the BDGP. It was on a per hectare basis. A lot of people wouldn't been aware of that. Um, it had. You know, a lot of people are still related back to a per cow basis. But look, it's, the way it's worked out is €225 Euro per hectare for the first uh, 15 eligible hectares and then 180 after that. So basically, how's it worked out? The reference number of animals, and I'll come to that, how that's worked out. So that's basically the number of suckler cows that you would have had over a three-year period and average of that and divided it by 1.5 livestock units, and that'll give you into the number of hectares that you're paying on. So look, it's just... Give you an idea that's where it's coming from um what's required for this scheme the proposal is the minute that you'll be a member of board bia that membership must be in place before you um apply to the scheme you submit a bis or um your basic payment scheme as is known now that it'll be known as bis going forward from 2023 under the new uh, cap proposal you'll calve down at least 50 percent of your reference figure so Suckler farmer doing all that say ends up with uh, 15 cows as a reference figure must calve down at least 50% of that. So must calve down at least eight cows or greater every year of the five years to, to, to take in his money. And you're required to attend a half day livestock handling course by the end of the year too. So as most look, it, it shows the seriousness the department are taking uh, health and well-being and, and, and the handling stock and the, the farmer will be paid for um, attending that. So the reference years, as I mentioned, how, how are they going to be worked out or how, how do I know many cows have I in the reference year going forward? So basically it is, look, at it, it's very welcomed that uh, there's a number of years here being taken. It'll be from 2016 to, to 2021 is going to be the five years. And the farmer can select what three years that he wishes to use, and that's an average of those three years. So you could, for example, select 
16, 18 and 20. And it's the average of the number of suckler cows you calve down in those uh, three years. And that's your reference figure for your scheme going forward from 2023 to 2028. So it's an average three years from 2016 to 2021. If you're an applicant and you don't have cows in those years and you're going to have cows in 2023 on, the department made an allowance and you'd be regarded as a new entrant and you'll declare a target figure for 2023 at the application stage. So look, the door is open for new applicants coming in, which is good to see um, in it. So look, this is, I suppose, the main one, and this will set the scene for, we're going to talk about maybe selecting um, AI bulls, and especially on the replacement side or the maternal side, it's important that the AI straws are going into those cows this, this spring are going to be the heifers, the, the, the future for 2024 onwards. So it's important to plan. What do we need? What's what's this new scheme? What's required? And so it covers both the sires and the dams. So on the sires and the on the bull side, it what's required if it's an AA bull or a stock bull, years one and year two, eighty percent of the calves produced on the holding must be from a four or five star sire. So the bull that you're using this year will determine the calves that you have in twenty twenty three or the AI star that you're using in the spring will determine the calves that will be born next spring. So 80% of the calves must be four or five star, 2023-24. Uh, that increases in year three and four to 85%, and 90% of the calves born in your, uh, in your holding in year five, which is 2028, will have to be uh, from a four or five star sire. So look, we see where, the, where, where, where it's going, the four or five star sire. The, on the cow side or the dam side, year one or year two, there's 50% of your reference figure. So if, if, for example, I have a reference figure of 20 suckler cows, that 50% or 10 or more of those retained in year one and year two must be four or five star. So look, it's important going forward, What, as I said, what AA straws, what bull you use on those cows that you end up with replacements four and five star. That increases like the bull option, to, but it increases on the, on the, on the dam side to 65% in year three and year four. So the, the, what's been used as regards the AA straws in 2023 is very important because they'll be calving down in year three and year four of the program. In year five of the program, it, it increases to 75%. So three out of every four da, uh, cows in your herd uh, by 2028 to be part of the scheme and to draw down your money will have to be four or five star. So look, that's number one, the replacement strategy. There's some uh, changes there um, and it's important to get our, get our head around this. Again, I'll outline that this is proposed. This is what's gone to Brussels for approval. And look, it's important that we are aware of this going forward. There's a weighing element similar to the BPS scheme that we're, we're used to the last number of years. At least 70% of the reference number of the animals in the holding must be weighed every year, and the weight submitted by the 1st of November annually. On the genotyping, which we're used to under the BDGP, at least 70% of the reference figure of animals in the holding must be genotyped each year of the program. So look, that's ramped up again from the figure we're at at the minute on the BDGP. BDGP in its current format will be uh, finishing in 2022 this year and will be moving on to this new scheme. Data recording. Each farmer, suckler farmer, will have a, a range of data through animal events, records and surveys uh, to, to finalise, uh, to, to, to draw down its money. So that's look four main areas. Um, the first area, I think is the area that will cause most concern is your, your stock bull being four or five there, there uh, or the uh, straws you're using. The, the next one is your dam or your cows, the future of your herd will have to be the, the, the 50, the 65 and 75 percent of them will have to be four or five star by 2028. And then moving on to the weight recording, 70% of the animals will have to be weighed in the holding. 
the genotyping is ramped up to 70%, and then the participant will have to uh, provide the survey. So the information we're providing at the minute, the dam facility, the milking ability of the cow, um, the calf, how, how vigor, vigorous the calf is, and then any cows, any cull cows that are leave the herd were asked for the reason they leave the herd. So that information will be needed going forward. So look, that's a quick rundown um, on it, Gary. It's just setting a scene, and I suppose it's going back here. This is the main slide, I think, going forward and setting a scene for tonight, and it's important just to bear that in mind when we're going through and selecting especially the replacement uh, straws that we're hopefully going to use in 2022. So look, um, I said I'll keep it short. There might be questions. We'll take the questions maybe later on, Gary. If, uh, well, when you just... Come just thanks, yeah. Shane, for that. Maybe, maybe you want to maybe just leave that slide up for a second. Um, um, just to let the audience know, there, if you haven't been on the webinar series before, down at the bottom of the screen, you should you should see a, a Q and A function. So, if you want, you can basically type your question in there. Just maybe, Shane, there's just one question that has come in here uh, in relation to the scheme. It says here, what if you use a French bull um, that has no star ratings here in Ireland? So what advice would you give to a farmer that says, what if, if you use a French bull? So this might be someone maybe that's bought a bull in France and brought him in. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Well, I suppose, look, at the minute, a lot of the bulls coming in, um, the first thing you'd have to say that they, they have to be genotyped, similar yeah. to the stock bulls that are here. And there is a lot of background information there. Now, on a lot of the bulls coming in, you know, there's some of their pedigree already here. There's connections here. So when that bull comes in, he will automatically gain um, ratings, star ratings, based on his pedigree, number one, and number two, uh, uh, on his genotype, will give a fair amount of information when that bull comes in. So, so basically the advice to that farmer is when he, when he, if he has a bull already and if he's not already genotyped, is to get the bull yes. genotyped as, as soon as possible. So he's two options there. Suppose he can uh, he can um, contact ICBF and they can send him out a basically a hair a hair card and, and, and get the bull genotyped. So that's important for farmers to know. You know you can get an animal genotyped at at at, at any stage. Okay, uh, listen, Shane. There, there's no further questions in, in the chat function at the, at 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 this stage. So uh, maybe we'll just leave it and maybe if you want to stop your screen sharing there and we'll maybe ask uh, John to uh, uh, to share his screen. Bottom of the screen. Okay, John, you're up and up yeah. and ready for action there. Okay, John. I suppose thanks, lads, first for having us. Um, it's good to hear we're still talking about softer cows with all the doom and gloom that's around. I suppose the first topic I'm going to cover is easy calving sires, and I suppose we see more and more of the heifers in the picture here being bulled, and that's why these sires are becoming more important. The first bull is Edenvale Ivor, LM2014. Um, I suppose you talk about index, he, he ticks the boxes and all the indexes, 158 on terminal, 182 on replacement, and on myostatin he carries two copies of the F94L, okay? So when we talk about a heifer bull, I suppose we want a bull with a lot of reliability behind him. So this bull Ivor, he's extremely easy calving. He's 2.5% calving difficulty in beef cows, 6% on heifers. I suppose the one thing I'll say from my, from my experience is that they're very, very disappointing calves and they're born. So I suppose you'll be looking, maybe checking for a second one, but they develop unbelievably. Like he's breeding super quality and yet he's so, so, so easy calving. I suppose when you talk about reliability, he has 5,000 records in beef heifers. So already 5,000 records in beef heifers, and he's still coming back at 6% calving difficulty. That's a heifer calf off, him, off a heifer. Um, he's doing a super job. If we go back, he has terminal, he has replacement, he has carcass waste, the daughters are calving in well. He's a bull that will tick all the boxes for that new scheme, and you can use him on good heifers. The next bull. Um, EBY, he's a living legend. He's still with us at 10 and a half, heading for 11. Uh, he's the most renowned limousine sire ever, I would say, for Cavanese and quality. 
Again, he carries two copies of the F94L gene, and I suppose that's the easy calve and profit gene. On this bull, we have sexed female semen available. It's not in huge supply. There is enough of it there. If you want it, maybe talk to Pierce McNamee or Martin Flanagan if you're in the Sligo Mayo area. He's 3.1% calving difficulty in beef cows and 6.9% on heifers. That's with 15,000 records on heifers. And I suppose a bull like this that's renowned for easy calving will get used on better and better heifers. And I suppose his calving difficulty is going to creep up a little. Um, we see international demand for use on heifers now. A lot of people in the UK that are bulling these fancy heifers are bringing now looking free BY to using them. So I suppose he's still living. There's plenty of semen there. Um, every day is a bonus with this bull. But he's a super bull for heifers. Okay. The next bull I'm going on to is Red Angus. I think a very, very safe option, ZEP. He's 0 0.8 calving difficulty on beef cows, 3.2 on heifers. So half of what the limousine is, still get the color, super milk and daughters. I suppose where would I use this bull on? Maybe something that you're very worried about calving. Okay, he's an extremely safe option. And he is producing good cattle. Like, I mean... If you good Angus Weanlands to sell now, they're 260 or 70 a kilo. It's not like seven or eight years ago where if you went to the commercial ring with an Angus beef bred Weanland, you get two euros a kilo. I think they're becoming a valuable commodity now, particularly the ones that are ticking all the boxes. We have quite a number of sucker farmers using this guy <clears throat> and all are delighted and back using them again on heifers. So I suppose just to recap, guys, 2014, very, very safe option. Going to tick all the boxes for any scheme that comes in. Um, EBY, oh, I, the way I'd be saying it is 2014 on a muscular heifer, EBY on a planar heifer. And if you're worried, ZEP, okay? I'm going to go to terminal sires. Unfortunately, Shane hadn't sent us those slides about the new software scheme, but I'm going to go to terminal sires anyway. The first one is a new Charlie bull we have. Um, I'm in the V 11 years this year, and I think possibly this is the best one we ever put in through quarantine. We have semen available in about a fortnight. Terminal index, 159. He carries one copy of the Q, one F94L. He's predicted at 7.7 .7 on beef cows. I don't think he'll be any easier. I hope he's not any easier. I think this is a bull that's going to produce super weanlands. He's for that good, mature suckler cow. He's a grandson of a bull we had 10, 12 years ago, Cloverfield Excellent CXY. Some of you might, might remember. Did a super job commercially. And to me, this is a real Charlie. He has length, he has power, he has bone, super ahead of him, lots of muscle. And there's just two pictures that were taken on the farm before the sales. You can see lovely, balanced bull, real character to him. I, I think an awful lot of this bull, I think we've a lot of them put through our hands, and, and I think this could be the best bull yet. I'd be saying use him in mature cows at the start. He is only a test sire. Next bull is Bud Arfus, 145 terminal index. These are all terminal bulls, so all bulls, Bridger Weanlands, 1Q, 1F94L. He's 10% calving, so he's not for handy cows by any means, but 45 kilos of carcass weight. He's a 52 off a pirate, breeding really, really well. You will have to pull some calves, no doubt about that, but if that's what you're looking for, a real Charlie bull breeding that sort of stamp to his calves, he's a 52 pirate. He is doing a good job. Next bull is Clenna Jasper. 7% uh, Cavan, real quality, shapey weanlands, great sellers, loads of hair on them, plenty of muscle, good tops in them, just like the bull himself. Never going to be huge, big, but real quality calves. 109 on terminal, 7 on Cavan, average Cavan, not hard by any means. Excellent farmer satisfaction with this bull. There are two calves off them. You can see they're a straight red cow. 
Really good yellow half for a calf, and the calf on the left is actually a half twin below and a farm and clear out of a red lemons and cow as well. Okay, Potter and Mark. This bull kind of ticks the box in both terminal and replacement. He's 135 in terminal, extremely easy calf and a 4% calf and cows, 33 kilos of carcass. I suppose he's not breeding like um, Clenna Jasper or Bud. He's breeding straighter cattle, not as muscly, enough shape. You'd be still happy with them. And they're real good performers. I suppose they're handy calves born, easy calving. Would be an odd man using them in pedigree heifers and getting away. I wouldn't be recommending them for heifers, but there is men using them. But again, breeding for a man that's working and wants easy calving and a good quality calf, definitely an option. So we're on to a few blues then. Um, this is Anne the Bowfox. I suppose this roan thing has gone mad. And a white bull will definitely breed you more colour, whether it's blue roan or red roan. He's 9.3% calf in difficulty in beef cows. Anyone using blues wouldn't consider that hard. Okay. I would be saying using blues, best cross is a limousine cow, let her be a half bred black cow from the dairy herd or a good red cow. I suppose the closer you get to pure limb cows, the more consistency you'll get in your crop of calves, okay? This bull is breeding the colours. He carries the red gene. And again, we have limited female sex semen available, okay? If everyone rang up in the morning and ordered 30 straws, we don't have it. But we have limited female sex semen available. Two heifer calves, lovely colours, real smart calves. Not over extreme. I suppose you don't want them over extreme. Um, going to make real good sellers when they come to cows. Heifers, Weanland, sorry. New bull. Um, looked in Belgium for a long time to get a nice red and white bull. Got this bull in the middle of COVID. Bought him on a video. Come home in June and he impressed us every day since he come home. Unbelievably correct for a blue. Nice bit of bone to him, lovely softness. Not he's not an extreme stream blue, he's well balanced, great topping him, lovely ending him. Um real styly machine. Look at with the fashion that's there at the minute. I, I know we'll have to tick the boxes on the sucker scheme, but these boys will do it terminally. But I think a bull, there's huge interest in him in at the minute, and he's a bull I'd have a lot of confidence in. James Bond, I suppose this is a bull Pierce would have sold a lot of in Donegal. Again, on suckler cows coming back around 10%, average calving on suckler cows. What I like about this bull is, I think his bull calves, both will do two jobs. Um, there's great bone and power and length of the calves, and yet they have loads of muscle, great tops in them, good heads in them, so they'll do both jobs. Like, There'll be serious cattle to finish along with Wienlands for the export job. That's a black calf for off a lemons and cow. And again, this is a, a, a blue calf off a commercial cow on a farm outside Ross Gray and Tipperary. But like that black calf is worth a lot of money in any Wienland ring. Limousins, I, I picked three very terminal limousin sires here for the Wienland job, maybe. The first bull, he's a foreman off an umpire. He carries one Q, one F94L, seven and a half percent calving difficulty in beef cows. A mature cows is absolutely no big issue. 30 kilos of carcass, which I can't understand. He, he had 35 or six, but in the last evaluation he dropped, but I can't see why his progeny were killed 60 days sooner than their herd mates. But anyway. Very, very good bull if you're going to sell Wienlands. Our store cattle going to do a super job stamping these calves. They're real smart, proper stylish sorts of calves. On the left is a heifer calf that was sold in Elfin, straight red calf with a white navel and a white tail, 370 or 80 kilos at 1800 last autumn. And that's the first pedigree son off him. And I suppose it was a fair statement to say his first pedigree son came to Elfin last November and was senior champion and sold for 7,000. So 
You can see he's doing a good job and consistent, very consistent. Hatcliffe Newton is a really good bull we bought in Carlisle. Never had huge figures when we brought him in. I suppose he cost uh, 10,500 sterling that day. Breeding cattle, very, very like himself. Long, clean, loads of muscle, real smart things. I suppose they're selling really, really well as Weanlands. Quite a lot of them using Claire. And they love him there. He's 8% Kevin again on beef cows. I suppose as an industry, we're looking for easier, easier, easier Kevin all the time. And getting up at 7 8% on a mature cow should be absolutely no problem to a proper subtra cow. Lads. I'd have no fear of it myself and I'd have no fear of recommending it. You know? There's two calves. Calf from the right is off a of Charlie cow. That's a pedigree bull is 11 months off him. You can see whacks a length of them, a bit of bone, good shapes to them, going to pull the scales when they get to Weanlands. Next bull is, is not for the faint hearted. Um, 120 on terminal, has a Q gene, has one F, 12.6 on suckler cows. Not for everyone, not recommending them to go out and put Joskins in every suckler cow. If you want something special, he's one of the last fantastic sons available commercially in AI. He'll do it every time for you. He'll pick them out of a bunch. Savage muscle tom, woeful wit, great heads, a real style of cattle. If you want that extra special, if you want something like the Roni have from the left hand side, but you could have the odd um, severe assistance, Kevin, but he is what he is, okay? I have only picked three replacement bulls here. We have loads of bulls in our catalogue. I spoke about Ivor earlier on, 2014. What I've picked here is three well-proven bulls, and I mean well-proven bulls, okay? The first one is Casino, and I suppose maybe if you're listening to these talks for the last couple of years, you might be sick listening to me about this bull. But year on year, keep going back to suckler herds, these are the best cows within every herd I go to, okay? Now, he's not 200 euros in replacement index. He's 125. He's fully proven. He is not going to move, and he is doing a super job, okay? The positive on milk, they have super calving ability, and they're very fertile, okay? Now, they're not small cows. They're going to be your 750, 800 kilo limousine cow, that will calve a bus when it comes to it. They'll have the milk to rear them and they have the ability to go back and calve. In my opinion, he'll leave you with very, very profitable cows that will also tick the box and they will also be fit to calve the likes of your Bud Arfus or your James Bond or your Jaskins. Okay. There's just two daughters. The one on the left is a first calver off a of cemental with an EBY calf, and the one on the right is a CWI off of Charlie. So you can see the one on the left doing a super job in our calf, still holding that bit of condition, going to go back in calf. Gunshot, um, as was, just shows about stars. This bull was very, very high index. We bought him a good few years ago. And um, now, He's gone back up to 196 euros replacement index, proven. He's plus nine kilos of milk and a calving interval of minus 4.7 days, okay? And I think, think about this cemental bull compared to a lot of our own and a lot of every other cemental is, you won't lose the terminal with this guy either. They're super cattle, they're review grades, not big rangy things, well made, serious cattle to perform. And I suppose we have sexed female semen of this. So if you wanted to breed four or five cemental replacements in your herd, this would be the bull I would be seeing. He's not for heifers, he's for mature suckler cows fit to calve. And I suppose talking on that, lads, when you're Breeding replacements, I think what you need to be doing is, is being really selective on the cows you pick to breed your replacements. I don't think there's any point keeping 
sucked their cows around the place just because they were born heifers in the first place. And I think what you need to do is, regardless of trade, keep the best for yourself and select the best from yourself from the best cows that have milk, that can calve, and that are easy gotten calf. They have good feet and good temperament. I think, yeah, we have to tick the box on paper, but I think we really need to keep our eye on the ball on what females were breeding and what females were breeding from. There's a gunshot half for calf on the left, and there's a son on the right. A lovely cemental, lovely quality, real well balanced cattle, enough shape without having excessive shape, and breeding really well the daughters. The last bull is a bull, I suppose, who was bought for a replacement job. Cave lands jolly. Stamps every heifer the same. Three quarter size, long, squares plates you'll ever see on limousines. Great hips in them. Serious calvers. Where they are in herds, people are very, very happy with them and going back using more jolly. We have demand for sex semen, just we didn't get it done this spring, but we're hoping to have it in the autumn. So what they are to me is they're three quarter size square cows with savage calving ability. They are fertile, they go back in calf. He's 120 again. As I said, lads, we've bulls at 150 and 160 and 170. But what I went through is proven bulls that won't change, they won't let you down. And there's just two heifers, a heifer and a bull calf off them, as you can see. Still good quality, same kind of thing. Real good calves. So look at that's where I'm at. Um I hope I didn't bore anyone. No, John. Uh thanks. Excellent presentation there, John. Um just can make the screen back on again. Um I don't think there's any questions specifically in for you at the minute, but um that's not to say we'll have 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 them questions later on. Um, I, I, listen, John, I am quite conscious there that you weren't showing the maybe the bulls with the highest index, but what's very important for farmers is they like to maybe use uh, proven bulls. Um, I know that's a thing I get told a lot of fellas hit is when maybe they go to the the effort of maybe using AI and then uh, they get these calves and the index drops away. Uh, it really annoys some farmers out there, you know, when they start using a particular bull and next thing, and the index goes south on them and then they're not overly impressed. So, um, you see, I suppose, you, Gary, if you brought that point to ICBF that bulls change and bulls fall and bulls rise, they'll come back to you with the same principles as what's been used in the dairy world of using a team of bulls. Bulls, like yeah. we're talking about men with 15 cows, not cows, yeah. 150. So I think particularly when the rules are going to go to 75%, four or five star, you really have to put your thinking cap on and it's now, not next year when this game comes in. And if you never used AI and you even bred your few replacements by using good proven replacement sires on your best cows, you'd bring your herd forward very very quick quickly yeah there's just there's one question that's coming here now for you john specifically in relation to a bull that you have in your in 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 Devea. uh can the bull lucky still be got um we hope to have semen for the coming season yeah yeah right we hope to have semen back on track for the coming season Okay, listen, John. Well, maybe I'll ask maybe Rose maybe to share her screen. Uh, we're we're doing good for time, so we'll have plenty of time at the at the end. There's another one more question maybe come in there. Um, is it for you? Um, is this recorded? Yes, this this actually has been recorded. And just to let you the audience know that this um, webinar tonight will be up on the Donegal, uh, Sligo Leitrim Donegal uh, YouTube channel. So it has been recorded. Okay, so listen, Rose, I'll maybe ask you to, to screen share. Um, Perfect, Rose, 100%. Super. Great, good evening. Um, um, good evening to everyone. Um, and thanks for, uh, thanks for having us. Um, what I'll go through is I'll go through bulls for maiden heifers, replacement bulls and terminal bulls. Um, Especially for the for the maidens and replacement, I'll I'll present them in panels just so that we can um, just reduce that, just so that I can talk about the index and compare index of different bulls, and then we've quite a lot of new, very exciting bulls that we'll have semen of um, in the coming weeks. 
So I will talk about them at the at the end. And um, I just have a list of bulls there suitable for maiden heifers. Um, and this is the maiden heifer um, panel. I don't know if you can see that cursor. Um, yeah, we can, Rose, yeah. Okay. And I suppose when you're AIing maiden heifers, there's a couple of things to remember. Um, if you're going with, if you're trying to calve at two years of age, you need to go exceptionally easy calving. So you need to go for, you know, less than 6%. And that's why you're coming in with your, your Angus, your Solaire, um, your Aubrac. Um, and we have a good selection of very proven bulls there. You can see the reliabilities and most of them are over 90%. And they're the bulls you need to put on your heifers that are calving at two. For your stronger heifers then, you can go higher than that. So we've bulls there that are very, very heavily used on heifers, bulls like Sag, bulls like uh, Craig Park Marcus, um, and then some Cementals like Liston Brie Gucci. They're very heavily used on heifers. So the trick is with heifers is um, decide the age of calving, and then depending on the age of calving and your own heifer um, is in the quality for select your bull. Okay, so um, Zag is a real, um, you know what I mean, flagship bull. So we've see, still seen him available of him. Um, Craig Park Marcus is, is easier than, than Zag and producing very, very nice quality. Um, Nell is also heavily used in heifers and a very good uh, female producer. And then if you want to go exceptionally easy i would really recommend not tom roy he's one of the highest replacement bulls available and as you can see his calving is only five percent on maidens and you still have excellent carcass weight he's 22 kilos in carcass and you've super milk there at plus 12 kilos so you know what i mean that that, that bull is bringing a lot bringing a lot to the table um now moving on to bulls for um replacements so I have some proven bulls here, but I also have some really exceptional young bulls. And remember, we have genomics now, so um, index are becoming more and more um, reliable. Um, starting with limousine, our number one seller for maidens is Moon Daragnell, um, replacement index of 131. Um, good bull, um, good on carcass. He's also good on maternal calving, so um, just... Sorry, I'll just click on to a, a bull page here just to talk about the index. The, the bottom three lines um, is, the, is the lines that really tell you everything from a calving, from a uh, replacement point of view. So that's the daughter's ability to calve, that's the milk, and the last one is the fertility. And sometimes we just look at the replacement index and we don't look at the detail, okay? So um, it's really important to look at detail um, when we're trying to select sires. So maternal calving ability is ability of a female to calve. And basically you need the same sort of figures as you're looking for in direct calving difficulty. So you kind of need them under 6%. If bulls go, are going up to 7, 8, 9%, then those daughters do not have good calving ability. Okay, so that's important. Um, very interesting bull, limousine bull from a milk point of view is Cross Liam. Um, he's plus 3.4 kilos in milk. Um, which is very good for a limousine. So he's a very, very good proven bull for milk and a bull I would really, really recommend. We have a fantastic range of Simmentals available, extremely high in uh, replacement index. Corrie Narp is the top bull. He's, he's just unbeatable. He's good in, he's good in everything. Um, very good in calving on beef cows, just 3.6%. Super carcass. Very good calving ability. And plus 4.7 kilos in milk. So he's not as high as a lot of other Simmentals and milk. You know, we've some there going up to 10 and 12 kilos, but the reliability is extremely high. Um, so at 99%, you know that that's absolutely real. So he's a bull that will give you a lot of milk. The last column there then is calving interval days. And that's the last line on the ICBF index page. And what you're looking for there is a big minus because that's the, that's the index that will reduce your distance between your pregnancies. So it's the calving interval. Um, so we're all aiming for about 365 days, but any bull that has shortened that um, is better. And basically that means that the females have excellent fertility. So we're talking about Curry Narc to breed replacements. He's, he's just unbeatable, ticks all the boxes, fully proven, 
can go wrong. Next ball, Lister Grand 50 Cent. Again, another very, very heavily used ball. Um, um, very high replacement index, 186. Easy calving, good carcass weight, plus 6.7 kilos in milk. So you have a lot of milk there. And again, excellent in calving interval. So you've, you've all the key things there now you want in the cow. Good calvers, good milk, and good fertility. Those two bulls would have been heavily used and in anyone on that's the, you know, that uses Simmental and AI, they would be very well aware of those two bulls. Rubigen here is Johnny, you may not have been that aware of because he's a bull that's coming up with very, very good index, just starting to be used uh, well now. And again, same story, good on calving, excellent on carcass, super on milk, but not as reliable, um, but plus nine kilos is extremely high. Okay, so those top three bulls would be the main bulls I would really, really be recommending for um, to breed cows. Gucci, the second last bull there, he's the bull that I was um, recommending ar earlier that you can use in strong heifers. So he's a super choice for strong heifers because um, calving is good, quality is good, good milk, good fertility, and good calving ability. And remember, you don't want to go extreme easy calving here. But it's important to avoid difficult calving bulls if you want to keep them as cows, because heavy birth weights, heavy birth weight is um, it's, it's transmissible down the line. So if you have uh, if you have a difficult calving bull, his daughters are likely to throw big calves as well. Now, in the old days, we were taught the absolute opposite. We thought you had to have a difficult calving bull to have a good cow. Um, and that's just because they were talking about pelvic width. OK, but if you want pelvic width, look at the ability to calve. That's the figure to look at if you want pelvic width and calving ability. Okay, so that's important. I would avoid difficult calving bulls um, to keep cows from. Okay, so that's our, um, that's our cemental list. And as you can see, there's a super choice there. So um, the, the best thing to do is go on the Progressive Genetics website and you can see all the bulls that are available because um, Obviously, it's not possible in a forum like this to go through all of them. Um, but our top bulls, Corey Narp is the absolute top bull. 50 Cent is proven as well. Rubigen here's Johnny is coming, um, coming on stream now. And then we have a very nice young bull, Lee Hard Links. I'll talk about him later on when I'm talking about the young bulls. Other replacement sires then to consider are other breeds. And the Sellers is a breed that, um, uh, especially not Town Roy, that we're selling a lot of now because you've massive replacement index of 258. Um, extreme easy calving breed, so you can put him on heifers, no issue there, plus 12 kilos in milk. So you've, you know, and he's a proven bull now. So you, you have a lot of milk there. You're not losing on carcass and you have very good calving ability as well. Tullibore Magnificent and Aubrac as well. Same story. Um, and the interesting thing about this Aubrac breed is they make fantastic suckler cows and they're very, very easily fed, which is something we'll all become more interested in um, with, the, with, with the current costs. So um, I wouldn't ignore Aubrac from the point of view of a suckler cow. Now, moving on to Terminal, and uh, I'll just pick through our, our main bulls. I'll start with, uh, with Charlie. And um, La Palle is our number one selling Charlie bull now. And he's just a phenomenal bull. He's only 4.6% calving on beef cows, and that's fully proven. And um, he's nearly plus 40 kilos in carcass. Um, so our flagship bull, Fiston, you know, people always say, oh, what's the replacement for Fiston? If you look at the carcass weight, you look at the carcass conformation, this bull is almost exactly the same profile. You won't get the extreme shape as you did with Fiston, but you have very good shape, very good growth rate, and no issue calving. And that's, and that's a very profitable bull because you use a bull like that. Um, and if you look about profit in the suckler herd, it's all about getting as many live calves in the ground as possible with as good a growth rate as possible. And if you can limit, um, avoid difficult calving, you'll get your cows back in calf quicker. You'll get more, cow, you'll get uh, longer out of your cows and you'll get more calves every year. Um, so La Pan is the bull really, really to do that job. He's our number one selling bull now. Orby is a relatively new bull. Um, calves are on the ground. Um, extremely easy calving. He's there at 3.2%. That's um, 
Um, I got new Calvin figures yesterday. That's gone up slightly, just to over 4%. Um, but exceptionally easy calving, very good on carcass. Now, obviously, the reliability is low, but he's there at 37%. And uh, quality is good. So he's a bull you can absolutely use with confidence. Um, it's too early to say whether he's suitable for heifers or not. I doubt it because he's carrying the 2204X gene. But certainly on second calvers on, you know, no issue with them whatsoever. Omega is, a, is another new bull that we introduced at the same time as Orby. And these bulls uh, come from performance test centers in France from a specific program, actually, that focuses on easy calving and good quality afterwards. And you can see it's working because we got Fiston, we got Fleetwood, we got Lapan. You know what I mean? All of those bulls came from the same, uh, from the same program. Omega's index are low reliability, but the first calves in the ground, very, very happy with them. That's actually his sire. That's not the bull at all. Um, very happy with the calves, easy calving, and, and really, really good quality. Lots and lots of shape. Long, clean, heavily muscled. So again, just following with easy calving, good quality. Moving on to blues, we have a big, big selection of blues there. So I'll just mainly talk about the, the newer ones. Delure and Folon have been our flagship bulls for a number of years. Um, I talk about these two bulls because they're fashionable, because they're carrying the red factor. And then I'll talk about a new pole bull we have down here. New Red is a bull that's gaining a lot of um, interest now because of the color. Um, so he was introduced because of his color, but the quality is really excellent. And he's an average calving bull, uh, blue bull for cows. So if you want average calving and quality and color, he's your absolute go-to bull. Next bull up is Patissier PPS. Um, again, a bull we've had for a number of years. Um, he's carrying the red factor. Um, he's about 12% on beef cows. Um, but for guys used to blues, that's not uh, an issue. Very, very good quality. And if you use him on pure, bread lim pure red limousine cows, um, you have about 50% chance of getting a red or a roan calf. Okay, so there's our, um, there's our main terminal. Now, um, moving on to our new bulls, because we have a lot of very good quality um, young bulls, and I just wanted to use the opportunity to talk to you about them. Celtic Rembrandt um, is a new bull. I've seen him available in a couple of weeks. Really a bull, I would call um, an all-round limousine. What do you want the limousine to do? Average calving, good on terminal, good on replacement. Um, new, new pedigree as well. Um, he's an Adapia son. There's his sire on the right, who's a proven French bull on maternal. And his dam is on the left. She's a four-man cow. So very, very interesting bull. A bull that should take a lot of boxes. And from a my statin point of view, he's carrying uh, 2F94L. So no, um, no disruptive myostatin genes there. The other new bull is um, Rotland Rubin. I don't know if I can get rid of that on top. Yeah, just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, Rotland Rubin, another new bull. Uh, we have semen available in a couple of weeks. Exceptionally easy calving, um, predicted to be 4.4% on heifers and 2.3% on cows. Um, he's very easy calving pedigree. He's a Tom's Choice iceberg out of an Altea dam. Um, very good temperament, very well balanced, and he's got a very, very nice, milky cow. So he's a bull we expect to do very, very well for us. We'll have semen of him um, in a few weeks. And all those bulls will be going through Gene Island as well in the autumn time. So for any of you that, are, um, that use Gene Island semen, you can watch out for these bulls. And I suppose the reason we put our bulls through Gene Island is that we get a very, very good proof from them, first of all. But also the progeny goes into Tully. So we get a lot of data on feed efficiency, um, methane production, which is something that's um, you know, becoming uh, more and more topical now, um, and also meat eating quality. So we get a lot of extra data in our bulls by putting them through Gene Island. Par for Proper is a bull that's been out for, um, for a good few months now. We expect the first calves in early summer. But again, very nice quality bull, very well balanced and carrying two copies of the F94L. Um, he's part of our short gestation um, program as well. Lee Hard Links um, is a new cemental. He's been available there just for a few months. Very easy calving pedigree. 
um, very nice crit bull and should be very, very good maternal bull um, plus 10 kilos in, in milk um, and a minus in calving interval as well, which is what we're looking for because we want to reduce those days. Now, moving on to our new Charlie uh, for terminal. Um, I'm really excited about this guy, Carbon Rory. As you can see, he's a super big, long, powerful, very well muscled bull. Um, very high in terminal index. Predicted to be 7% on beef cows. Um, massive carcass weight of 45 kilos. So um, very, very interesting bull. But look, we'll have to test him to see uh, how he does. Um, relatively new bloodline as well. He's a Blaylock digger from a Clyde Diplomat cow. That's a hind quarter there. Another new Charlie we, we've um, just about to introduce is a Gold Star Echo Sun. Um, really lovely quality bull, um, really well balanced. Um, he was junior champion at the National Calf Show there in um, there before Christmas. Um, Gold Star Echo from an infield Picasso dam. That's his hind quarter. And this dam is a tremendous breeder. She's bred a lot of really, really top males and, and females. Um, his full brother was the top price of the Tullamore sale there in, in March. So um, something new, something interesting, um, and expect to do a very, very good job for us from a terminal point of view. Punadro Nicky is a fist and son. He's been available for a couple of months now, but if you haven't used him, um, really, really recommend him. Very similar to Fiston, um, same profile, um, good on calving, very good carcass weight, and a lot of shape, and not too heavy in the bone. Because if you want quality, and you want weight, and you want shape, and you want to get them out the back, uh, don't go too heavy in the bone. And that is really what that bull is. New Blue is a very interesting pole bull. Um, first pole blue to stand in Ireland. Super quality. Um, you can see the quality from there and beautiful color. Um, so we'll have calves of him um, soon. Um, but just uh, quality wise, he's excellent and super legs and feet as well. And just a few new Angus, and these are Angus now for the suckler herd, not the, not the dairy herd, because we have a lot more performance here. And um, this is the closest bull to Friarstown ideal peat um, that I've come across in recent years. Um, calving is coming up good, easier calving than, uh, than FPI, for those of you that know FPI. Um, excellent in carcass weight, excellent in carcass conformation. So um, very useful bowl for anyone thinking about um, using Angus uh, finishing their own cattle. Now we've a lot of other very good Anguses, if you, you know what I mean, if you're using Angus and finishing cattle like Treebridge, Powys and Man o' Man. So this is the new bull that I expect to come and, um, and, 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 jo and join those two bulls. Our Terman is the same, young bull, um, very good in carcass weight super quality and very, very good in carcass conformation because carcass conformation is something that the Angus breed struggles with sometimes. And as you can see, he's excellent carcass conformation. Um, and just to finish up, um, Red Bull um, Lamborghini. Um, so, um, Bull we're testing at the moment, um, which should be very, very interesting bull from the point of view of um, using on maiden heifers to calve it to and to keep that red color if you want to keep the limousine color. Um, so very, very nice um, early maturing um, type bull. Um, so that's it. Um, so um, if there's other bulls that um, you know what I mean, people want to ask questions about or discuss, I'm quite happy to do that. I just, um, I just thought it was interesting to talk about the new bulls tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. <coughs> maybe we'll ask John and, and Shane to maybe uh, join us again. Uh, they're still awake anyway, which is all good. 
good start. Good start. Right. Uh, there's a lot. There's quite a lot. Rose, thank you very much for your excellent presentation there and the the new bulls that uh, Progressive have 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 this year for farmers out there. Look, there's a lot of questions that have come in here in the last few while. So I think I'm just going to start from the top and maybe just go down through them and maybe we'll maybe go back to you, Shane. First of all. Um, there's a question here from a Donegal farmer, um, and I suppose it's more to do with the genotype, and it says, why can't the genotype tags not be put out in January instead of when cattle may be out on grass? Also, why can't the star ratings be given out before October so that you could breed the heifers earlier? So two questions there. Um, right, so look, I suppose the first one, Gary, the genotype tags, look, it's a common one that comes out this time of year, people have been cattle out. But the main reason the genotype tags aren't issued is because the actually the heifer calves that people would want to uh, genotype or should be genotyped typing uh, are actually not born until the springtime. Um, and that's why, you know, it, it wait until, until most of the calves are registered and then the, the, they're selected at that stage and um, that's why most of the tags aren't sent out. Those, a lot of farmers too that have been in the BDGP since uh, onset, a lot of the animals on the herd now have actually got a, a genotype and so th some farmers will be short on females until the calves are born. I suppose yeah. another thing that some farmers are not aware of maybe this year, there is a, a DNA calf um, um, scheme this year, a pilot scheme and the farmers that are p participating in that are basically they're issued with uh, two tags, one for BVD and one for taking a DNA sample from the calf. So the calf is actually genotyped uh, uh, basically when you're registering the calf and ICBF predict uh, the, the samples go to Weatherby's and they basically want to predict from the, the DNA sample that goes in what the, the sire of the calf and the mother of the calf is. So that's sort of something that's coming. So I think in a few years down the road, the, the, the BGGP tags will be replaced. Okay, Shane, sorry to cut across you there. Um, well, the, 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 the star ratings um, won't come out until, until those um, genotyped uh, either samples, hair samples or tags have been sent back. And then the, the, the run or the analyzing, once they're analyzed, those figures will be available then um, later in the year. That's so fine. So Ro 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 Rose and John will probably correct me on this, but I've, as far as I'm aware, ICBFs are running about six evaluations now during the year, or is it four? Yeah, you get evaluations now every two months. Yeah, so, so it's six evaluations yeah, in the yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, and if you keep an eye on the ICBF website, yeah. they, they put up the deadline to get yeah. the hair samples in to be yeah. ready for the next evaluation. I think the, the next uh, evaluations are going to be run, I think the 23rd of May, if memory serves me right, and I think the, the hair samples had to be in by the start 20th. Of March. Yeah. Was it the start of March, the end of January? Well, maybe it was the end of January, sorry. Yeah. I, think, I, think it's, I think it was the 29th of January. Look, I looked at that recently, but I know, so it's, it's just for farmers to be aware that they do run evaluations six times in the year. So if you want a particular animal genotype, you know, the sooner they get the, 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 the tag or the hair sample into ACBF. Right, we'll move on. That question was answered. Uh, Lockie, um, is this recorded? Yes. Question here for Rose. Um, I've seen Rose present that to add milk, you need a bull with, uh, five plus for daughter milk. What are NCBC or AI companies recommending that are proven that will add the milk to heifer progeny? I'm not. It says um, it says it says you need a bull with five plus for daughter milk. I think he must be talking about five kilos. Um, what are NCBC or AI companies recommending that are that are proven? that will add the milk to heifer progeny. Okay, so a couple of things about milk. The first thing about milk is you need milk in the cow first. It's, it's, it's very, very difficult to have a cow that has absolutely no milk and expect to use a bull on her and the daughter has milk. Okay. So the best thing to do with milk is to try and keep it in the herd, okay? And um, if you want to breed your replacements, make sure you're using, um, you're, you're selecting your cows that have good milk to breed replacements from. So that's the first thing to say. If you're talking about bulls then, um, if you want to go with proven bulls, um, you know, four plus kilos of milk is, we give you a, 
plenty of milk. It doesn't sound high, but you do have, if you look at the proven bulls there, um, so Cross Liam, for example, is one of our bulls. He's plus four kilos of milk, and uh, you will have a lot of milk with him. Um, if you talk about Simmental, Corrahina, um, he's roughly the same. He's nearly five kilos in milk, so you'll get plenty of milk with him. And then if you want to go very high, I mean, we've proven Simmental's there, plus 10, plus nine kilos of milk with 50 cents. But those daughters have really a lot of milk. Yeah. Really a lot of milk. And I suppose the thing with milk is we want enough. We want good udders. But too much milk can be a bigger pain in the neck than not enough milk. You know what I mean? Because cows that have too much milk and not good udders, um, they invariably end up getting mastitis if you're not, you know, really watching them and getting calves to suck them out early on. Um, and you've lost your whole benefit then because they're working off three spins and two spins. Yeah. Okay. So um, watch the cows, make sure you've got others. Um, and then once you're around four kilos of milk, you're, you, you're good enough. Okay. And avoid like, big minuses as well. Like, okay. you know, if a bull is at zero, he'll more or less leave you where you are. But, but certainly avoid big, big minuses. Okay. Thank you, Rose. Uh, question now for, for John here. Um, so the, the clientele on the night seem to know their bulls here. Has John CWA uh, sex semen? No, we, we would have had CWI sex, Gary. It would have been done the first time when the machine came to Moore Park in 2013, but unfortunately it's gone. But we have CWI conventional and have it enough for a while. But no, no CWI sex. We do intend sex and in jolly in the back end. We had Ivor sex, it's all gone female, but again, he'll be done again in the back end. Okay. Uh, question for Rose here. Uh, what about Grenache for maiden heifers? Easy calving, calving down as two year olds. I know he has to be. Oh, he has to. I know he has to be pre ordered. Grenache, yes, um, he has to be pre ordered, but a very, very good bull. Um, he is easy calving, very good females, um, excellent on milk, excellent on fertility, and good breeders. And just maybe for the audience that don't know, uh, Grenache, I'm, I'm assuming that is a limousine bull. He's a French um, proven limousine maternal bull. Maternal bull, okay. Um, another one for you, Rose, you're popular here now. Can you ask Rose if they will get Lodge Hamlet and ice cream back in? They are showing out of stock on website for a good while. Okay. Uh, whatever chance we get in semen out of live bulls, we've no chance of getting it out of dead ones. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's right, okay. Right, okay. Um, but 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 um, um, having said all that, um, we've another same... pre-order bull there um, called Hector. Um, and if you want a replacement for Lodge Hamlet, he's the closest thing you'll get. Okay. Okay, so that's him. And then Elite Ice Cream, we'll have a bull available in the back end of a bull coming in that is very, very similar type to ice cream. But if you want that type of bull, Tom's Choice Imperial is a great choice. He'll give you that level of weight, that level of shape, and, and correct as well. So I, I would... Um, Tom's Choice so uh, Imperial. Ice cream, I talk about Tom's Choice Imperial. Okay. Uh, question now for you, John. Shane, you're not very popular here at the minute. Um, Shane's delighted. <laughs> Shane's delighted. Um, um, I have a question here for John on Clada, Clada McCabe. We are waiting for four cows to calve to him in the next few weeks. Has he heard anything on how he is doing as the two copies of the Q gene a little worried? Yeah, he's a double Q carrier. Um, surprisingly, the bull's not hard calved at all. Anyone I've spoke to is very, very, very pleased with them. I had a guy from speaking to me in England today, used them on second calvers, lovely calves, no trouble calving. Don't be worried. That would be my, once they're not blue cows, but you know, right. in general, he's fine. Just for the audience out there, uh, John, what is Clada McCabe? He's a limousine league? bull. He's a, an extreme bull. He's an Ampertain foreman out of a very famous cow, Millbrook Ginger Spice. Um, a real extreme muscle limousine bull, show calf job. You know, when you're going that heavy on the bull, you're going to get some little bit of calving at some stage, you know. Okay. Um, 
Another question for you, John. Or quite evening. Uh, John spoke about the Bulls. Pierce McMurray was pushing in Donegal. What Charlotte Bulls are Deve and Progress Genetics advising to use in Slag on Leakton to be keen of the ring in the top marks in Dyra, Drum, Shamber, or Mohol? <laughs> They're getting competitive. Sure look at <laughs> They're getting look competitive. At it's the same Charlie Bulls were pushing everywhere, but particularly for the West of Ireland, I think this new bull. Um, Bally M. Rocco, I think he's something very, 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 very special. Again, what, use him a mature suckler cows. What, what ball was that again, John? Bally M. Rocco. He's a CH8169. Right. He's full of old breeding. There's echo in him. There's lots of the old Aniska cows. Anyone that have been to Charlie's, that was Brian Donnelly's back in the day. He's a real proper Charlie that's going to give you 420 or 30 kilos very, very quick of style and hair and muscle that, that's what you want the bull we had Loki hopefully will be back um, and Clenna Jasper they'd be the three I'd be recommending for the Wienland job as I say Kevin on two is fine the Rocco bull I don't know but I'd be saying third canvas on he should be sound ok maybe I'll throw the same question to you then Ro Roselish Oh, yeah, should we have a massive selection of Charlie's there? So it, it depends on what cows you have. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it, it depends on a number of things. It depends on what type of cows you have, your own circumstances. Are you going to be at home with our calving? Is there somebody going to be at home? Um, and then your own tolerance for calving, because that, yeah. that varies enormously. Yeah, okay? that, that's, that's sort of something, you know, when I worked down south and then moved back up to Donegal, you know, there's an awful difference in what people consider in difficult calving. I know, <clears throat> suppose from the from the veterinary side of things, large animal vets are starting to get, look, I wouldn't say low on the ground, but uh, you know, they don't like to be going out to a farm two, three, four times and doing C-sections and taking big calves from cows. And I think you hit the nail on the head earlier on. Look, it's, it's live living calves we want on the ground uh, to cover it the is. cost. So, to, so, to, so having said all that then, if you take what we have available, just a couple of, you know, snapshot bulls, Lapan is very easy to use. You can put him in an awful lot of cows. Um, you won't have any trouble. Um, and he's um, very good quality and super growth rate. So he'd be kind of my go-to bull for, for relative easy calving. Um, if you want bulls then at the other extreme, for example, if you have Salier's cows, you know you, I mean, you can go with a bull like uh, Keena Mischief. And he's two copies of the Kyo gene. Really exceptional, exceptional quality. Um, but you need the cows for him and you need to be there to calve him. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're kind of the two the two extremes. I expect that fist and son at Cuna Drone Ricky to do extremely well as well, um, because he's a fist and son from uh Cable and Sphenian cow. So you kind of have calving and growth and shape there, which is which is really what you know th that sounds like profit to me, not trouble. Yeah. Question for both if you're here again, uh um uh, Best no, this is a this is a fairly loaded question. Anyway, best Belgian blue bull to cross with Lemmy Cow to produce export type winnings. Question to both John and Rose. So. I can go first if you want. Yeah, I suppose just on that. Um, if any tuned in, we did an old Wainland demo last year on a farm down in Ras Grey. We would be still importing a lot of blue sires from Belgium. I suppose due to COVID, we didn't get out there a lot, but going again this year, but we have four or five Super Bulls there for the job. We have a Bull Tattoo, BB6703, a blue and white bull, really extreme, fine bone bull, breeding savage, savage shape. The next bull is a Bull Maradona, a new bull to us. Um, the boys in Belgium went and brought him in from a farm at three year old, so he must have been doing something really special out there. To me, he'd be like a bull we had years ago, Argon S1241, but this boy is BB7842, a black and white bull with serious, serious, serious muscle to him and fine bone. I suppose for that Wienland export job, you don't need bone and power. You need real extreme, extreme. And another bull, Engen, or the bull I went through, James Bond. And bulls of our own, the bull I like a lot, is a bull called um, Bisturi, a white bull, 5214. Calvin is sound, he's easy calvin, you could use him in second calvers. White bull, breathing lots of colour, lovely shapes, and you could use him in better type cows. And the Bofox, look at there's lots of them there. We would have stuck with that job through when it wasn't that popular, I suppose, Gary and a lot of guys. 
that knew their system and stuck at it are getting well paid now. Like four euros is the new three euros at that Wienland export job, you know. It's funny. It's uh, come back to Rose. And I know in, in Donegal now the blue wouldn't be as 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 popular as it would be down in your neck of the woods. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's I suppose sport. Galway clear summer Tipperary would be good for blues, you know. And there is a good market. Kerry even would be good for blues, you know. Yeah. Rose maybe. Yeah, look again, there's a, there's a very big choice there. Um, we are partnered with a company in Belgium called BBG, the, the, the biggest AI center in Belgium. So if anybody's really into their blues, you know, go on their website and we can get in any one you want for you. So that's kind of the first thing to say. Bulls that have stood the test of time for us to use our limousine cows for export quality wheelings have been bulls like uh, Rosemount Cash, very consistent bull. Bulls has done a very, very good job. RWS. PPS, uh, Patissier, the bull I presented tonight. Um, he's a bull that every year we sell more of him because anyone that uses him always goes back to him. Quality is good. Consistency is good because this consistency is something that's difficult to get in blue sometimes. Um, so I would absolutely use him as well. Um, and then bulls like Delure and Folon have bulls, bulls have been using for years and years and anyone into the export market have used him. Um, we also have Knox, but Knox is getting up there then from the point of view of calving. Um, so I would, you know what I mean, from a calving point of view, quality is very, very good, but he's a little bit up there in the calving difficulty. Okay, thank you, Rose. Thank you, John. Uh, question maybe here for you, Shane. Um, you're on mute there, Shane. Shane must be on the mobile. Shane, you're on mute there. All right, sorry. All right, you're all right. Um, uh, can you go and buy Gino, Gino tag now and tag before cattle go out? It's not my, I suppose you can go and order them. Um, but look, um, they haven't st started, ACBF haven't started sending out those tags yet. But understand if you do contact ACBF and, um, or, or, order the tags or the animal uh, numbers that you need um, that they can be sent out in, in the first row. Yeah. So look, it's important to pick out the animals there. Um, and if if you're in a lucky position that you have enough heifers or calves born at this stage, heifer calves that you can go and genotype, yeah, you can give yeah. a contact uh, CBF and, and select them at this stage, yeah. I know from talking to Chris Daly earlier this week and ICBF that I know a few of my clients in Donegal have received their tags just there in the last few days. Um, but there is farmers out there that won't have sufficient females, so you'll be getting the tags maybe later on. And you can't, suppose, order uh, hair samples. Uh, question here for maybe John or, or Rose, whichever one of you want to answer it, is can someone, uh, suppose you just were talking about uh, F94L there in Q204, and suppose can someone explain the importance of myostatin and how it affects calf, calf and birth size, and, and about checking your own cow's myostatin? Okay, I can check that if you want. Um, okay. Uh, we have, just checking to see if it's still there. Certainly last year's um, Progressive Genetics Beef Catalogue, anyway, we had an article at the back to explain. I think it's in the new one as well. Um, and it's on the website. Um, to check your own cows, first of all, they have to be genotyped. That's the first thing. And once they're genotyped, it will only cost you six euro plus fat. So what you do is you send Weatherby's the list of tag numbers you want done. Um, and then they'll ring you with your, um, with your uh, bank card, looking for your bank card, and um, they, they'll send you on the results after that. So, so once the animals are genotyped, it's a very, very easy thing to do. And if you are using really, you know, the high-end quality beef bulls that are carrying the double muscle gene, I would recommend you assess your females as well. Okay. okay. So okay. just, uh, so then just the, about the actual genes themselves, um, most breeds like hereford for example um don't carry the the gene not, not that we're aware of yet anyway um extremely rare in the scimitar breed um salier's breed extremely rare um so they're the kind of breeds that do not have it so that's why you know the likes of salier cows you 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 needn't worry putting an extreme bull on them because they they're unlikely to be carrying the gene and they've, they've got good calving ability 
Flimazines then carry what's called the F94L. Um, and my statin gene is divided into disruptive and non-disruptive. So F94L is considered non-disruptive. So you get an advantage on carcass weight and carcass conformation, but you get very little negative impact with that. Okay. Then the other mo most common gene is NT821. And we find that in uh, all blues of two copies. Um, you'll find it in limousine, parthenase, little bit in angus sometimes. And that will give you more shape. It will give you more growth rate, um, but you have a higher, higher birth weight usually. And then usually the females that are carrying the double muscle gene will have more muscle. So then they have less pelvic area. So then if you cross another double muscle bull on them, you're likely to have a full double muscle animal. So you're getting more muscle in the calf and the calf has less room to come out. Come out yeah. So that's really why it's recommended to use, do you know what I mean, to test your cows. And then to finish up then, some Charlies, um, it's more common in the Charlie breed, we can see it in the limousine breed as well, is Q2O 4X. And generally you get heavier birth weight with that again. Um, so I suppose the advantage of the myostatin is that you get more shape, you get more weight, but you get higher birth weight. But it's also worth bearing in mind, the myostatin will only add to the birth weight that's genetically there already. So for example, Fiston was a very um, easy calving bull. Um, he came from an easy calving bloodline. Um, so it was an easy calving bloodline with the myostatin on top. That's different to a difficult calving bloodline and putting the myostatin on top. So my statin is just a piece of the jigsaw. So it'll just add a little bit more to what's there already. Thank, thank you, Rose. I hope, hopefully our, 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 our questioner understands that well, well. Right, John, you're not off the hook yet. Look, I think we need to finish up for this and there's lots, still lots of questions here. So, well, that's just good. The audience are, are sticking with us here. So, um, uh, David or John, what about Bud Arthur? Bud, is he a good replacement for Lockie for the coming season? Yeah, you could use Bud. Uh, he's bred the other way. Lockie was a pirate 52. This is a 52 pirate. Probably a little stronger on the calving. Cleaner Jasper would be probably breeding very, very similar to Lockie was. They'd, that'd be the way I'd say it. On mature cows, you'll have no bother with Bud. You'll be happy with the calves. Or on plainer cows, you'll be fine. But maybe on the better cows, come back to Cleaner Jasper. Okay. Uh, someone knows, uh, has John any BB2247 straws available? If he had the latter numbers for Saturday night, we might organise a few. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so a good handful of 50, 50 say. Um, okay, Je um, question here. Any new Albrecht bulls in the pipeline? No, it's not directed to anyone. So any, any new Albrecht bulls in the pipeline? We have a very yes. high index bull there, Johnstown Nelson. Um, come improving at the minute, but no, we have no new bull bought, but probably on the horizon for the autumn. Okay, Rose? Yeah, Tullamore Magnificent has done a great job for us. Um, Mount Cane on D is a relatively new bull. Um, his calving is coming through there, so he's a useful bull, and we will have more bulls coming through later on in the year. Okay. And one final question here then. Um, I breed uh, pedigree Angus bulls for the dairy sector. What bulls would you recommend for this job? So this is someone that actually breeds pedigree Angus for basically selling on to dairy farmers. And what bulls would you recommend? Okay, I suppose a couple of principles first. Um, tonight we were all talking about the terminal and replacement index. If we're talking about breeding bulls for the dairy herd, we need to look at the dairy beef index. So that's the, that's the first thing. Um, Calving is really important. So you have dairy heifer calving difficulty and you have dairy cow calving difficulty. Um, so I would, you know what I mean? I would keep those breed average and below. Um, and then from the point of view of the beef sub index, um, you'd want to be at least, the breed average I think is about 45. So you'd want to be higher than that. So bulls like uh, Mateo is our top seller easy calving, good on growth, exceptional on gestation. So I definitely recommend Mateo um, if you're breeding bulls for heifers. Fargal if you're breeding bulls for cows would be two bulls that I really recommend and I've pitted the Angus myself and I'm using both of them. So if I had to pick two bulls, I suppose I'd go with the Mateo and Fargal. All right, John, do you want to? 
I suppose, yeah, just to follow on from Rose, I suppose, if you were looking at the Deve book um, catalogue, you'd have to look at the Bull Kill Kill Prime Lad. He's the top proven bull around in Dairy Beef Index. He's very, very easy, Kev, and he's coming back at 279 days in gestation, and yet he's positive on carcass. I suppose you just really have to watch the Kevin for the dairy job. And I suppose a plus for him is we have sexed male semen available, something new, um, that you could breed maybe your lesser pedigree cows to sexed male. We also have it on Eden Vale Ivor for maybe pedigree maiden heifers that you want to breed bulls at easy Kevin market. It's something new, something different, and pedigree breeders actually clicking on to it. One pedigree man but 80 straws of prime lad already for the autumn. So uh, it's quite interesting, you know. Okay, listen, um, I think that's all our questions answered. Look, uh, before I, I just before the audience maybe disappear, um, just I, I'm going to go through a few dates in a minute, but just before I do go through the few dates, I'd like to thank Rose and John and, and Shane for their presentations tonight. Look, they've been very informative. Uh, Shane covering the, the new uh, Suckler Cow Carbon, Carbon Efficiency Programme that's proposed, I should say, at this stage for, for 2023. And I'd like to thank John and Rose now for going through their panel of bulls that both have for, for 2022. Look, there's plenty of selection out there. And look, that's one thing about AI, you know, you can match match the bull to your, your cow. And, and I think both of you has hit the nail on the head there. Look, you know, farmers are asking what's the best bull, but it very much depends on, on the cow or the replacement heifer, you're, what, what bull you're using. So just a few dates for the audience here. I know the audience is quite varied across the country tonight. I'd say looking at the names there. Look, tomorrow night in the, the Clannery Hotel, the department are having their, their draft cap proposal meeting. It's in the Clannery tomorrow night at, at 8 p.m. A few closing dates, and just to let farmers be aware of, uh, the multi, um, the minister there launched the the tillage incentive scheme, um, and basically a part of that is for the multi-species sward. And as I was told today, that the closing date for that is actually this Monday, the fourth of April. So it only opened last week, and the closing date is Monday, the fourth of April. And you have to, um, I done one application this afternoon myself for a client. You actually have to log on to agfood.ie. On your own website, uh, so that's w log on to Ag Food, and you will see multi-species sward there. You select that, and you basically have to select what plot or what parcel you're actually going to sow it into. You don't have to have it sold by the fourth of April, but you actually have to have your application submitted to the department by this Monday, the fourth of April. So that's a very tight deadline. I think there's a million euro um, put aside for the multi-species, the clover, the red clover, and the the tillage incentive scheme hasn't opened yet, but or the terms and conditions there, but the multi-species sward is actually there on ag food. The next closing date for the audience here is um, Monday the 25th of April, which is a closing date for the beep, beep S scheme and the dairy calf scheme. So that's for weighing your cow and your calf, the meal feeding or vaccination and the fecal sampling of, for, for suckler, suckler bred calves. So you can get a maximum payment there of 90 euro for the first 10 cows and 80 euro uh, thereafter. So that's the beep S scheme and the closing date for that is the 25th of April. Um, and suppose other date that we all know about at this stage too is the closing date for, for single farm payment or beep, uh, basic payment scheme is basically the 16th, 16th of May. Um, um, I don't think I have any other dates. So actually there's just one last question come in here. Um, we'll maybe just take it. Bedtime, someone says. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but anyway, very good. Uh, maybe they're up all night lambing you, lambing or something like that. Bedtime. So anyway, listen. Uh, without further ado, like I'd like to thank my panel again, Rose and John and Shane. And look, thank you for participating. And good night, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Night. Good night. Night.